This immortal creature can create a form of cancer that's contagious. Jellyfish-like creatures called hydras can develop tumors if overfed, which in turn can be passed on to their clone offspring. A new study on this bizarre phenomenon not only reveals details about the process in hydras, but improves our understanding of transmissible forms of cancer in general. I never even knew that cancers could be transmissible. While tumors are an inevitable risk of being a multicellular being, there are thankfully few examples of cancer that can be passed between individuals. Though most well known are two that affect the Tasmanian devil, another instance affects dogs, and 11 observed in bivalves. Of course, we're keen to understand how contagious cancers emerge in the first place, namely to avoid somehow conjuring them in our own species, but also in the hope of protecting other creatures from the terrible suffering Tassie devil face due, due to their facial tumor disease. But all these known instances of transmissible cancer had been well established by the time we found out about them, so evolutionary ecologist Sophie Tissot from the French National Center for Scientific Research, CNRS for short, and her team had to take a different approach to tracing the origins of contagious cancers. Conveniently, conveniently one freshwater creature named, related to a jellyfish and sea anemones spontaneously developed tumors in a lab experiment 15 years ago in response to overfeeding. Hydra oligactis, a freshwater creature related to jellyfish and sea anemones that is considered immortal in many ways, reproduces asexually, cloning itself by forming little buds that break away to grow into physically separate uh, but genetically identical creatures. This, along with the propensity to form tumors under lab conditions, shows potential for researching the genetics of cancer development. Tissot and colleagues set out to show just how valuable this model can be for understanding the evolution of transmissible cancers. Using Hydra oligactis, which exhibits spontaneous tumor development that in some strains became vertically transmitted, this study presents the first experimental observation of the evolution of the transmissible tumor, the authors write. This work therefore makes the first contribution to understand the conditions of transmissible cancer emergence and their short-term consequences for the host. They collected 50 hydras from Mont d'Oc Lake in France and set them up for life, life in the lab to guarantee a high tumor development rate, budding and thus increased chances of tumor transmission. The researchers fed some of these polyps an excessive amount of brine shrimp larva five times a week, mimicking the conditions that prompted tumor development in an earlier study. Nineteen of these overfed hydras, which were bulging with tumors after two months, were selected and their buds collected and grown under the same circumstances. The researchers followed this process through five generations of tumor-forming clonal buds, selecting these from their non-tumor peers to beget the next generation. And to make sure the tumors were being transmitted from the partners, rather the parents, rather than the just arising spontaneously in each generation, the researchers took to the descendants of looked into the descendants of the cancer-free hydras. Hydras from parents that had tumors were four times more likely to develop tumors than those whose parents did not have tumors, even though all the hydras were genetically identical. Through all this, the researchers confirmed that tumors can indeed be induced by Hydra oligactis and that transmission rate can increase over time. They also noticed the fifth generation of hydras carrying transmissible tumors began to show changes in life history traits compared to their tumor-free counterparts. They increased investment in asexual reproduction efforts before the tumor had a chance to develop, with budding slowly down after the tumor set in. This seems to go hand in hand with another change in which bud mortality was higher after the appearance of tumors. 
These modifications suggest an adjustment of life history traits of the host to offset the tumor's costs by producing more buds when they are more likely to survive and remain tumor-free, Tissett and colleagues write. They note that the scarcity of transmissible cancers may be more due to the lack of suitable environment conditions for their spread, since, at least in this study, the acquisition of transmissibility seems to be no issue for tumor cells. If this is true, they say, it's crucial to consider these aspects in the study of ecosystems disturbed by human activities, as they could potentially modify the conditions that favor the spread of transmissible cancers. And this was published in the Proceedings of the Royal Society B, and it's on Science Alert by Jess Cockerell. Please leave your comments, and thank you for your support. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.